A large column of the Russian armed forces with equipment and manpower was spotted in the Kursk region of the Russian Federation near the Ukrainian border near the Sudza checkpoint. The Ukrainian armed forces did not allow the Russians to even get close, but delivered several powerful blows to the concentration of Russians. The first blows hit the head and tail of the column, the rest of the attacks finished off the central part. Judging by the reaction of the Z military officers, the losses of the Russian army are colossal. They demand to punish the commanders who gave the order to the military to form a column in the affected area of the Ukrainian armed forces. Again they covered our column in the rear. They walked in a row, in a long formation. Technology and people. I remember a quote from one security officer who was the head of the main directorate, the stupider the authorities, the less they doubt their wisdom, right upset Russian propagandists. Judging by their data, this is not the first defeated column in the Kharkov and Sumy directions, where the Russian Federation has accumulated forces and is trying to conduct an offensive. Recently, the West gave permission to Ukraine to use the supplied artillery against advancing enemy forces on Russian territory. Belgorod is just beginning. How strikes with U.S. weapons on Russia will help Ukraine at front. U.S. President Joe Biden has allowed Ukraine to strike Russian territory with American weapons. According to Western media, the first strikes could begin within a few hours or days. Biden agreed under pressure from his advisers and allies, the New York Times reports. The American president has allowed limited strikes on the territory of a country that possesses nuclear weapons for the first time. However, the White House emphasizes that this pertains to acts of self-defense, allowing Ukraine to defend Kharkiv from cruise missiles, rockets and artillery. Recently, the president instructed his team to ensure that U.S. weapons could be used for counterfire in Kharkiv so that Ukraine could retaliate against Russian forces that are striking or preparing to strike, one official noted. Changes in Washington's policy took effect on May the 30th. It is specified that the ban on long-range ATACMS missiles remains in effect. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky confirmed a positive message from the American side. He added that he cannot disclose details, but the U.S. decision is a step forward and an opportunity to protect residents of border areas. As highlighted in The Guardian, strikes could target military forces and command centers in the region bordering the Kharkiv region. The first attacks are expected within hours or days. Alexander Musienko, the head of the Center for Military Political Studies, concludes that we will soon see significant strikes on the Belgorod region. In fact, the process of providing assistance has begun so that we can strike at the concentration of Russian troops. They are currently forming groupings for further advancement into the Kharkiv region, he told RBC Ukraine. Military expert Vladislav Zeleznov also anticipates strikes on targets, at least within the territory of the Belgorod region. This is indeed very important, starting from aircraft launching guided aerial bombs from there and ending with missile complexes like Iskander-K, Iskander-M and S-300-S-400 stroke launchers. We must destroy enemy targets because it's legitimate, he emphasized in an interview with RBC Ukraine. Moreover, now that Ukrainian intelligence clearly knows where enemy troops and equipment are concentrated, there is a right within the framework of preventive measures to strike the American weapons. The occupiers behave too brazenly just a few kilometers from the border, constantly employing artillery, mortars, missiles and cabs, he added. According to him, there is an opportunity to apply a wide range of armaments. For example, using HIMARS, MLRS, against troops, equipment and missile complexes, as well as using the Patriot air defense system against aerial targets over the Belgorod region. According to Zeleznov, threats exist not only from the Belgorod region, but also from the Kursk and Bryansk regions. Therefore, the next stage could be permission to use American and other Western weapons in these regions.